How's it going everyone? Welcome to another episode of The Creator's Process. As you know, my name is Jaden, and right next to me I have Laura. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. I'm really good. That's great to hear. Yeah. And so, I guess for everyone who doesn't know you, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, my name is Laura, but I go by, or professionally by Laura Vera, um, which, yeah, is my, yeah. Your creative My name? My creative name, yeah! <laughs> and so what do you do with yourself in the arts yeah. industry? Yeah, um, so I, I'm predominantly a life model, but I also, I also perform, I really love burlesque, um, and I've been doing that for a number of years as well, and a general artist too, so I like painting and drawing on all those all these other cool things as well. So yeah. you're putting your feet in all these different um, aspects oh, of yeah. art. Yeah, 100%. I always feel like one avenue is not enough. You know, you have so much creativity. You gotta yeah, you, you, you just got to give it a try. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, that's it, that's it. And so I guess, you know, to yeah. start the conversation off, so um, how did, so when, when it comes to life modeling, what was, how did you get started into it? What was like the catalyst? Yeah. Um, I, so I first, came across life modeling when I was at uni and it was really quite cool um, and or life drawing rather and I remember going into the room and and kind of being in this crazy different space and it was very not formal but a bit a bit something that unusual that I hadn't encountered before and it was both kind of confronting but then also very freeing and quite beautiful and I was like I'm gonna do that one day <laughs> when I have the courage to do that um, yeah, and fast track a few years later, and yeah. I decided to take the plunge and, and give it a go. <laughs> what, were your, what was your process of taking that plunge? So, like, yeah. how did you, um, I guess, what was the plunge of how did you get started <laughs> with that? How did I dive into the exactly. depths of the art world? <laughs> um, I've always loved creating, and funnily enough, I think my family would call me a pretty free spirit. Like, they're very <laughs> used to me walking around the house with little clothing on, because, not because, you know, it's it's... I don't know anything particular, but I just I just don't really mind too much, and I think the body is a really cool thing. But yeah, I I'd gone through a few years back some big life changes, and I just kind of decided that I'm going to tick these these things off my list that I really want to do, um, and life modeling was one of them. So yeah, yeah. Did you have to yeah. do any like workshop or anything like that? Yes, definitely. So I I actually hit up an old. Um, an old art lecturer of mine and she said why don't you see whether there's a life model society in Melbourne and there there is and it is probably the only one in the world that um, that is basically a incorporation of life models yeah. and they run run workshops called the life model society and yes. yeah yeah so you do one of their workshops and I was I was lucky enough to be invited to, to join their society as well and it's fantastic yeah education it's, as well is huge it's really interesting so yeah. when you were doing the workshop was it a challenge like what what was uh, the process of doing the workshop like yeah what, was... what kind of habit well you kind yeah. of go in the room and there is probably you know um it's all extremely professionally run and you're very well looked after everything's really clearly cut um and outlined at the start of the session and essentially you you uh, learn to be a life model and there's about probably 30 or so other people in the room as well so it's a bit chaotic and crazy but it like that is the best way to jump in and, and yeah. determine to start so they use um, they've got 30 years experience so there's like yeah which is huge Jeez, that's a it's, lot. <laughs> yeah it's kind of like the, the shared experience of of um, Melbourne's life models over the ages is kind of built up what we know today, mm -hmm. um, which is really nice, and they set kind of like guidelines and standards around that. But the workshop itself is run by the Life Model Society Committee, and they employ um, artists and really well-renowned life models to to teach you in in small groups. So it's really quite, okay. really quite cool, and yeah. Yep. That's interesting. And <laughs> <laughs> were you like when you got to the class? Were you mm. nervous? Were you um, oh. was it yeah like was there a bit of nerves there? <laughs> Heck yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, you know getting undressed in your bedroom or at your house or you know if your housemate sees you, oh my god! But in front of thirty strangers, that's totally completely different experience. Yeah. But for the most part, it was kind of nerves at the start, yeah. and then you just get into it. And I think it was. I think that's when I knew that, hey, this is something I could do and I would love to do and not because, you know, it's 
I don't know, like, hey, look at look at me and my body, but it's like this is this is what the body can do, and this yeah. is a really cool way to to encompass art and, and the human body. It's fantastic. And so, how long have you yeah. been life modeling for right now? <laughs> um, probably since the end of 2018, I think is when I started. So, yeah, I would say 2019 is when I really um, started to get into it a bit more. So maybe just over a year, yeah. um, year and a half, maybe. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And so during that time, did you, because you said you do life modeling, yeah. um, you've done the classes, yeah. do you yeah. do stuff for painters, for photographers, do you, you know? Oh, where does my work kind of take me? Yeah, like, exactly. I, yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, I think that's what, in extension, not just for life modeling itself is, is a really fun outlet, but the people that I've met are the coolest, most creative people I think I've ever met in my life. And, and yeah, so in terms of work I've done definitely with photographer and art photographers, reference photos, paintings and things like that, um, digital imagery, like you you name it and <laughs> and yeah, and, and then even on the other end of the spectrum, so no, not so much as big wig professional, but more so um, in schools as well. So I've worked, wow. yeah, yeah, in, in schools. And I think, I actually think that was a really valuable experience okay. um, working within a school as well because you that might be the first the first uh, look at the, the naked human body other than someone's family or, or yeah. for example where so many young people get so much information which is like the porn industry where that the, the human body is yeah it's always seen in a sexual nature so I think mm. to take that away and to make it this neutral really nice space is yeah is cool too. So there's a bit of a difference to when you're modeling for like a normal life drawing class um, yeah. outside of um, schools and all that to yeah. when you're modeling for a school, there's a bit of a difference or a bit of a atmos mm. different atmosphere? I think maybe different atmosphere, I think in terms of it, the children that we always, um, or, or that come to the, the classes, they're already, they're, they're taking an art class, so they would, you know, they're really interested in art anyway I think maybe it's not so different for the running of the class but it's definitely it feels different to me because yeah. I think for a lot of it like a lot of the kids would just go quiet because they're like oh this is really I can't look different. this person in yeah. the eye and and all that stuff but um, yeah I, I think in terms of the reward I, I get is really nice because you see these kids um, be able to see the body in a, in a different way they they see that you're both a person but then also you know this is this is a creative outlet. Yeah. And it's okay to view the human body in this way. Oh, um, that, that's really interesting, yeah. and I think it it just comes down to you know they're all there to you know create art together, and you know they're all there yeah. to you know celebrate the human form. It's a yeah. way of celebrating drawing the human form and creating art out of it. And yeah, I think that's really amazing, and I think there's a lot of really great classes out there that mm -hmm. um, and. I've, I've obviously you know that like you've probably modeled for a lot of classes out there. And you can always do more. You can always learn more. <laughs> you can always uh, keep expanding. But do you have yeah. like a um, so when you're about to do a class? Yeah. Uh, do you have like a process that you go through? Like, do you practice posing? Do you warm up? Like, wh how? What is your process? So when you get yeah. booked for the class, what do you you know? What is your process before going before to the class? That, um, it will be a matter of I always I always tend to bring something different to each class and not physically sorry and, and yeah not a tangible thing but more so I like to to research quite a lot before the class so not as much as um, kind of like definite things but more things like I want to know is the teach is the class a tutored class because then that will give me a different idea as to whether maybe the teachers looking at or teaching the students about something specific like a contraposto pose with lots of angles and yes. lots of spaces in between yeah. or you know in terms of um well that's more negative space but more so you know maybe I want to express that in my life modeling okay. so I see it as a really collaborative process and I say a lot of research but I more so mean more like I like to get a feel for what the, the class yeah. would be like prior to the me going, so I have a bit yeah. of an idea of what to work with. Um, okay. Yeah. And yeah. so, do you like to go to a class with a theme? Like, do you like oh, to? Yeah. yeah. Do you think that's a very important aspect for when you uh, like modeling for someone? Yeah. Sometimes, yes and no. Okay. Um, because I like to, I like to keep it open at the same time. So I like to have a good idea of maybe more like a repertoire of things. So if I feel like 
there's something I'd really like to express or it falls within a certain month and, and you know that's like a theme that's been coming up for a month, maybe I, yeah. I will. So I have in the past, but I don't like to rely on it because I like to still create in that moment because I feel like whilst the artist is creating something, I, I too am creating that. Yeah. Um, creating for them. That. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's, it's like painting with your body in a way. Well, that's how I see it anyway. Telling a story. Yeah. Telling a story, yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that actually. So going to photography. So, because yeah. obviously there's a different... Um, there, it's different with the way that you know you're modeling for uh, multiple people, but then yeah. when it comes to photography, you're just modeling for one person. So, like, if a photographer messages you, yes, do you have a process of like before you work with them? Do you um, research who they are? Do you research oh, yeah. the theme? Like, what what is your process of yeah. doing that? And that kind of to check out, check them out, and see you know yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Definitely. So, I I like to. And often these days it's a bit more informal, so it won't be via email, it'll be via, probably via like Instagram or a, a Facebook message yes. and things like that. So I like to know that they're um, legitimate and professional and the reason why they're contacting me is to, to um, make a creative piece and things like that. So I will often, I will often always uh, uh, kind of imply or, or ask like more uh, explicitly that I will get a chaperone. Yes. Um, with me for the session, so you know anyone that says no to a chaperone, bit dodgy as to why that is, because yeah. they just sit in the background and it's more so for my protection. I also will set my own rate, um, and I will always ask for all details of the shoot prior. I think it's always important to set boundaries and limits and stuff, and to have that in your mind prior to to attending. So I always try to make that a very open discussion because at the end of the day it comes down to safety and to um, mm -hmm. my own well-being and, and I need to look out for that for me too. Absolutely so. because you know safety and comfortability yeah. of the model I think in my professional opinion is yeah. definitely the number one priority it's should huge. be for anything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you definitely check references and all that sort of thing and do you always make sure that they have a theme in mind when um, they message you the first yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, I like to, I like to know that it's it doesn't have to be a well thought out concept, but I definitely like to know where they're going to go with this exploratory piece yeah. um, and, and that kind of thing. And I think that shows a certain level of professionalism also, yeah. the fact that they're able to tell me those details. And, okay. yeah. yeah, so so it doesn't come to the day and you know you get mm. to the photo shoot and they say, yeah. oh, actually, can, can we do this? And you're like, well, it wasn't discussed at the start. So, yeah, yeah. You know. I'm, I'm less likely to be inclined to... Um, possibly go ahead with if, if they request that I see it as more like an inappropriate thing especially if it's um, something I don't know yeah that that my job doesn't call for yeah, so yeah. yeah yeah definitely that's something I'm always really wary of and in, and just normal things like hey you need to, to confirm maybe 24 hours 48 hours a week prior yeah um, as well all of these are really good indicators that someone is genuine and really wants to work with you. Exactly. But in a, in a professional Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense because I yeah. think it does show a bit of a professional approach if like, you know, if they communicate 24 hours to 48 hours beforehand yeah. because it's showing that, you know, they want to make sure that everything's all good, that there were any um, unanswered questions, like if you have mm -hmm. any questions about it, and yeah. it gives you that time beforehand to yeah. talk yeah. about any uh, problems or anything like that, and yeah. yeah, I definitely understand where you're coming from, because yeah. I think, you know, you hear too many stories about people who go to photo shoot and they're like, well, originally this was the idea, mm -hmm. but then they kind of get there and like, oh, so this is actually what's going to happen, and you're like, hang on a second, like, you mm -hmm. didn't talk about this beforehand. Yeah. And so that you know, I definitely. So, do you think communication and well, honesty is like a huge? It's huge thing when um, it comes to. Oh, definitely. And I think, yeah, honesty, honesty is really nice, but you can't expect it of everyone. And the and the thing is, it's really hard to tell whether that's true. So I always, I think the best way is to safeguard yourself. Yes. Um, yeah, in those things. And I think definitely on the other end of it, for a photographer to always think through these things, I think that shows your integrity and your professionalism yeah. through it. So yeah. on, on the, that other side, I think, I think um, yeah, both parties, both a model and both a photographer can ensure that that way they have the best working experience possible. Yeah. yeah.
So yeah. you, you want it to be a fun experience, an enjoyable experience, and yeah, yeah. you just want ev yeah. both parties to be comfortable so yeah. that they know what's happening on both sides. Because you know, I think yes. yeah, yeah, definitely communication is a very is a key to a lot of what we do. Yeah, oh, <laughs> you know? 100%. Definitely first impressions are everything, like yeah. when you get a message, is there like mm. <laughs> a way, yeah, no, definitely it's like the first impression. Is there a way that you can, I guess, suss out if from a first impression of a message if they're being legit and not legit? Like, is there a way how you can see if that makes sense? Yeah, kind of read between the lines. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. I think it can be difficult because artists we as artists, I will include myself in this, you know, in terms of, you know, things, punctuality, um, <laughs> replying back to people, yes. you know, artists <laughs> can be really a little bit more, you know, it's fine, it's okay, we'll do this in some time. And people can have the best intentions and, yeah, absolutely. and you can have a really good experience and someone can be um, like that and a bit more free flowing and, and all those things. So I don't always necessarily judge someone on a very on their very first message but what I will be looking out for are things of um, that that they're not they're not flaky for one so they don't say they will do something and then and then not not do it um, so you know um, not following through and stuff like that I definitely think if um, if they are contacting you online that they their work is shown and what I will do as well if I can is to ask fellow models in my community or other professionals as to whether they've worked with that person before to get an idea of not just not more so what the person's like but to ensure that I might be working with a person that will be safe and failing yeah, failing absolutely. those things I will always bring a chaperone to to the session and, and things yeah. like that as well to ensure my safety <laughs> exactly all. you know yeah. that's absolutely because as yeah. I said safety comes first with everything yeah. you know, especially in this line of work so I guess the last thing I'll ask you do you have many future projects coming up in the next few months those kinds of things yeah, um at the moment yeah I've got a few photography things coming up and all that kind of stuff in terms of my future work. I just like to see where life modeling would take yeah. me. I um my so my official background and where I I first came into contact with life drawing was um university which in I was studying my psychology degree. So I've always wanted to marry the two up. So next year I'm planning on um um, taking that a bit further and studying art therapy. So Wow. Yeah. That's so it'll take me in a slightly yeah. different route but um still still involved in the community because I think it's such an important and cool thing and I think everyone should should try life modeling. Well first of all I want to say thank you Laura for taking the time Ooh, to do this interview okay. with me for this channel that's and right. yeah like thank you yeah. to everyone who <laughs> has uh, watched this video. Yeah. If you want to check out Laura's work I will leave her all of her uh, links to her uh, to her Instagram, Facebook, yep. email, Emails on there to well. in the description. Yeah. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if, of course, like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you next week in the next episode.